So in Abacus, we created a 3D deform deformable and solid using extrusions. So we just so we can input here minus 45 and minus 45 and then 45 and 45. And now we are centered at 0, 0. And now I have to use 600. And I want to be very careful about my units. So units are in millimeter. So my center is 0, 0. And I want to fix my center. So I, when I so when I give it a radius or a diameter, it doesn't just shoot off. And we have a material. Oh, oops! I still get it done. And then six hundred. Yes, now we good. And I'm gonna create a material that is steel and two hundred and ten one two three. 0 0.3 and create a section now and apply the section to it and create the assembly part in the assembly now we want to create the mesh over it and use the same mesh size oops I'm gonna go to the part now it can't be meshed in abacus so what can we do we can split these two things using this face so let's try that and split the cell using the extended face and we hit create partition and done. Now we can try it. And it looks good. But we can really refine it using the meshing. Like this thing is not possible in ANSYS partition and maybe I think that's why they have a different kind of measure or meshing algorithm and now we want to do it three points so we get even more better mesh third point yeah now the mesh is a little bit different than what we can see in an ANSYS So let's <clears throat> let's start applying the boundary conditions and we're gonna apply the fixed boundary condition at the bottom. And I wanna fix everything. And I wanna apply my rotation to this edge. I I have to create a step and the step would have the load. This is my moment, and now I cannot apply moment to an edge or a face. That is what we can do in ANSYS, but we cannot do it in Abacus. So let's apply to this point. Uh, I mean, I know that it's wrong, and you would find out soon. But what can we do to you know make it right so let, let's first try with it and then we can try change it so 200 thousand oops that's 2000 kilonewton and then uh, sorry 2000 newton meter now I'm gonna change it to newton millimeter one two three and let's create a job charge 3d and I'm gonna use six things and let's submit and it's gonna give me an error can you guess why now we it about it with an error let's see in the monitor monitor what it says one node has inactive degree of freedom on which boundary conditions are specified the node have been identified in this node now we already know that this is a node that doesn't have any boundary conditions so how we can tie this point or the, to this face or let's say these edges and you already know the answer that is to create a reference point and then tie it 
to this its boundary conditions now we have we're gonna put constraint on it and I would use a I would use coupling rather than tie so let's select this one okay and done and then we have the surface so let's select this surface for now and then we can check later on so we have all the user freedoms but you know like really we only need to tie the third one and then it would just work fine we don't have to tie all of these so let's try now oops we didn't just change the boundary condition over here so we want to edit and or dismiss and then this reference point then done and now now my torque oh sorry yeah now my moment is applied over here now we can see the arrow that is being applied over here so let's just submit it now and then we can compare the results and we are done with it so it seems like when when I just selected UR3 it just didn't work so I did have to select all of these but you can try unchecking one of these to see which one do you need and which one you don't so in my opinion turn off these two and then you would have these three on and the third one on and then it would still work but let's try it later when once we are finished with the results so oops now we again have the same problem I want to see the on average results and I want to see at the true scale so one might is we have too much I that we don't we are not interested in the Tresca say the hundred like if you think that the Tresca is the sheer stress then you are so wrong so let's see what are the shear stresses? Shear stresses are these ones, S1, 2, S1, 3 and S2, 3 which are the same as directional stresses in 1, 2, X, Y, Y, Z and Z, X planes. So let's try with these ones. S1, 2 has 19. Which S1, 2 is which one? In X, Y plane. X1, 3 is 44.13. So we have the max as 47. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. And this one, S223, we have 46.8. Yeah, that is somewhat relevant to it. Or my negative is 45.4. Let's see if we, we do have the same kind of stress as minus negative. And we can see that it's 46.8 now we want to compare this to the directional stress results in ANSYS and stress where are the directional stress normal stress and x y axis oops no it's in the shear stress sorry yeah my bad so we want to no not normal I'm gonna shear stress. This one is X Y, and it's still in X Y, X and Y. Let's create in Y and Z. Let Let's see what do we have in Y and Z direction. Y and Z direction. So it's seventeen point six five something, and the region is this one. So in X, Y, it's 19.6 and the region is the same. But you know, like since we don't have, we have different kind of mesh here, we would have a different kind of spread on it. So I wouldn't mind too much on it, but the direction of the stress is very important. So when we have the high stress, it is in X, Y direction, which is in, which is now in my X and Y, Y is normal to it. And my normal to it is Z. So my highest stress would come out in Y and Z. S23, which is 46.8. And that is fine. Now, one of the cool features with Abacus is that you can hide a set of elements. 
and let's do it now so we want to hide all of this circular thing and we want to just look on to this one now what do we have at high as high as stress is this much but this part has a a high stress due to the interface with the round one now we want to hide these elements as well and then we can see that it the highest stress that we can see is 12 or 11.95 11.95 or 12 or 13.2 yeah they are very near so we can just keep refining the mesh until we get the same stress or good results but what about the third and the most important result that is the directional or angular deformation so in abacus we can see that we have the u displacements and then u r which are rotational displacements so we want to see how much we have as you are that is 0.014 or let me change it in annotations legends and fixed yeah 0.014 that is 0.01431 radian and as the default unit of angle is radians so we can see here and about which one is about this is the magnitude like the maximum one so along which direction we have it let's try u3 and that that is it and that's it for now and in the next video we will look how we can see the angular displacements or deformations on the answers thank you very much and have a great day